to Miss Cindy's Kitchen and today we're going to be making scones and the core recipe I received off of a bag of, of um, flour and whenever you go to the store make sure you actually look at the bags of um, flour and sugar that you're buying because you never know when you're going to be finding a real keeper of a recipe on there and I think this actually was from a 10 pound bag of sugar that I got at Smart and Final so anyway we appreciate you following my channel and liking and subscribing and giving me your feedback in the comments I love hearing from all of you and today we're going to be making the original blueberry scone recipe but using peaches it actually calls for one and a half cups of frozen blueberries so I experimented recently and opted for frozen peaches because we happen to have frozen peaches on hand and I just cut them up, chop them into half an inch bits, and you actually mix them from frozen. I just had to soften them a wee bit in order to make it easier to um, chop up because they were hard as rocks. And for this recipe, we have four cups flour and four and a half teaspoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, and the original recipe called for six tablespoons of sugar but i didn't think that that was enough the first time i made them and so i upped it to a full half cup which is like an extra two tablespoons of sugar it's just personal preference but i felt that that worked better for for us and then you're going to stir together the dry ingredients and using a whisk or a fork works well to get everything incorporated and then we're going to use, use cold butter in this recipe. Cold butter. Cold butter. Because when you're making the scones, you need cold butter. And to make it easier on me, I'm going to actually cut it a little bit just so it blends better. So you need one whole stick of butter, which is a half a cup, plus one table two tablespoons so i'm gonna do that and then for this next one you can just use the measure guide on the pack of butter and just cut it through the wrapper and those measure guides are very handy and that way you can leave the butter intact for a future baking adventure and then just peel the paper off the butter and what you're going to need to do is, first off, wipe the butter from your fingers, hence the expression butter fingers. You really have a hard time getting a grip there. So, a pastry blender. And this takes a little time. So you're going to be mixing it until it becomes coarse crumb texture. About the size of peas. So just keep shaking the butter off the pastry blender and just keep going until you get it into crumbs about the size of peas. Now I notice the technique you use where you, you, you I want to say stab in and then twist. <laughs> you basically stab twist and twist. Twist and turn. It shakes the butter off of the pastry blender and just helps incorporate the ingredients better. This can be a little time consuming, but it calls for cold butter, straight from the fridge butter. And as you can see, it's starting to look crummy where the butter is mixed in. And I just want to scoop to the bottom of the bowl to make sure there's not any big lumps of butter down there that aren't getting mixed in. All right, and then the next thing we're going to do, see now it's just all blended in. It looks just like flour with a few lumps of butter in it. It's pretty much all mixed together. So just shake it off and we won't launch into that song. <laughs> <laughs> so it calls for three fourths cup butter. And in this recipe, it reads, 3 fourths cup plus 2 tablespoons milk divided 
And when a recipe tells you divided next to an ingredient, look further into the recipe to see where you're using the milk in addition to the first part of it. So in this case, it's three fourths of a cup goes into the batter. And then later on, we use the two tablespoons to spread on the scones prior to baking. Oh, okay. So that's why it's important to read all the way through your recipe or else you're going to end up making a goof that could have been avoided if you just read the directions. That's why your teacher always said, read the directions before you proceed. So, and then we're going to have two eggs. So, I'm just gonna crack them in here. And then I'm going to whisk those. And they're gonna go into the batter. And now I'm going to get a dough blender to blend this. A dough blender? A dough blender. This oh. is a tool we got in the cake section at Michael's. And it's so great at mixing up biscuit batter and scone batter and brownie batter and all kinds of good stuff. As you can tell, it's really mixing the things together. And this is actually a very dry, crumbly presentation. So don't worry, that's the way it's supposed to look. Scones are kind of like biscuits, but they're sweet. And they're kind of dry and crumbly, which is why you kind of need them a little bit when you put them on to the, out to roll out to shape. All right. See, it's coming together. Oh, yeah. It's kind of hard to mix, but, and you want to scoop down to the bottom to make sure you get all those pockets of flour up. You got to make sure that everything is very much mixed together. Yeah. So, all right. Okay. So we're going to pause here for a sec so I can get the baking pan out and then show you how to shape the scones and then we'll set them on to bake. It, it was three, quarter, three quarters cup of... Oh. Three quarters cup of milk Okay. that you added just prior to the egg. Okay. I think I, I may I, have misspoke and said butter, but then again, we use so much butter in all my recipes, it's kind of on the tip of my tongue. Anyway. And so what do you put the peaches in? We put it in now that the dough is blended. Oh, okay, cool. Just put them in cold. Kind of like a cold start on a winter morning. Put them in cold. Okay. So, we're going to just stir them in. Now, can you use any kind of uh, frozen fruit with this? Like, I mean, I know you said the original was blueberries, but could you use like strawberries or? I think you could. It's a, it seems to be a very basic recipe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish mixing them in by hand for the peaches. But what I want to do is show you all how to prepare your pan for the scones because it needs to be greased. So we're just going to use some pan spray and spray it like this. Pretty basic. And then I'm going to set this aside for just a moment and I have a pastry mat that I will show you that we got as a souvenir on one of our Christmas trips to Disneyland from downtown Disney, the Marceline Confectionery Store, which is also an episode on our Travel by Nature sister station. So We'll be, we'll be leaving a uh, link to that, <laughs> that uh, channel on the, in the comments. Oh, I got a piece of fuzz on here. Okay. So... One tip I recommend to you all is save your Parmesan canisters because when you have to shake flour out onto a cutting board or, on a, or a pastry mat, it makes it a lot easier. You can just dust it out and smooth it out. And I'm going to move these over here for just a sec. And let me wipe up this little puddle here. And what's nice about this pastry mat is it sticks to the counter. 
It's kind of like those clings that you got in story time when you were younger, where it sticks to a board. So, you're aiming for an eight inch circle to shape your dough into. So just spread out your flour. And the dough is a little sticky, which is why you wanna have flour on your mat or your cutting board. It just saves frustration. So just very unceremoniously, just dump it on there. And again, the two best mixing tools you have are the ones attached to your body. So just use your hands and mix the dough in a little bit. It's a wonderful sound. Yes. <laughs> it's the frozen wet peaches. But let me tell you, they make some amazing scones. And I have a neighbor who can't have seeds. So instead of making blueberry scones, I decided to try peach for her because it's frozen fruit without seeds. Well, they have seeds, they're just not the seeds that you can see. Well, it's, well, it's not, they're big that, pits. It's, yeah, it's called a pit. Not it's called a, a pit. Yeah. I'm finding that a lot of the items we're baking now during this wet season are coming out really wet. So you can tell this batter looks really wet, but you know what? It's all good. So we are now at about an eight inch circle. Actually, it's closer to 10, but that's okay. You want to have it roughly the shape of a circle, which is nice to have a pastry mat. But if you don't have a pastry mat, just take your average dinner plate that's a circle and just kind of shape it. So, you know, go for like eight to 10 inches in diameter. So, and <laughs> one step I skipped. We're supposed to divide this dough in half. I got so enthused about my peach scones, I almost made one big batch of scones without separating it into two halves. So we'll take this cold, wet bundle here. So why do you separate it into two halves? Because that's what the directions say. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, read through your directions. Even though I've made this a few times, I still have to read the directions, so. Well, you're talking to a man here, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like on a, Tim the Toolman Taylor, cut once, measure twice. Measure twice, cut once, actually. Follow the instructions or else you'll have to redo your work, which is okay. And this is actually a very sticky dough because of our lovely rainy weather we're experiencing right now. So when you bake, just take that into account that you're going to have to deal with some weather. So this dough being wetter, in addition to our weather being wetter, you're going to have to add a little extra flour or else you're going to have very sticky hands. So you're going to be cutting this into eight wedges and just gentle cuts. You don't want to slice through your beautiful pastry mat. And just try to be symmetrical, but it's not a big deal if you're not. Just pretend it's a Costco pizza. They're completely random cuts. I don't think they would know even triangles if they met them in a, in a dark alley. <laughs> and then place them on your prepared baking sheet. This is another reason why you grease your pan. And next they're gonna be going in the oven, which is already set to 375. And they will cook for 15 to 20 minutes. All right, so let get those on there. And this actually makes a fair amount of scones. As you can tell, it fills up almost this whole pan. And I usually shape them and adjust them into, uh, so they all fit. So this is where it gets a little messy. Take your other lump of dough and shape it into another eight inch circle. Oh. <laughs> Between the wet weather and the wet peaches, this is a very sticky dough, but they'll still be delicious. Oh, they're, they're awesome. I remember what we had the last time they were just, Yes. I love peaches. With some cinnamon sugar and some warm butter. Oh my goodness. You've got a delicious accompaniment for your morning cup of coffee or tea or even a glass of milk, whatever you prefer. So again, 
an eight inch round cut into eight triangles. And again, be gentle with your knife. You don't want to cut your, your pastry mat. As it's much better to be cautious than careless and have a mistake to clean up. All right. And we're not aiming for perfection, we're aiming for deliciousness. Ugh. These are very sticky, but they're very good, be very delicious. All right, we're gonna make this fit. I'm not getting out a second pan just for a couple extra. This hatch, this one actually has more peach than scone. <laughs> I think I need to shape that one a little bit. We'll make a round scone. We'll do it freestyle here. All right. Put this one on. Get this guy into the corner here. All right. And you can actually just use the rest of your peaches and just add them. These peaches actually taste so good in the scones. You'd be surprised. If you've ever tried blueberry scones, taking, putting in a different fruit actually just kicks it up a notch. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick and then we're going to paint them with milk. Just out of curiosity, could you use like chocolate chips? Yeah, I don't see why you couldn't. I think the core recipe is the same and add-ins can vary. But if you do use fruit, you use frozen fruit. Because that's what works the best. And I'm sure on a drier day or in the summertime, these won't be quite so wet. Well, so, California, so we're not used to. Yeah, we're. Rainies. I think we're almost at a monsoon type of weather where it's just continually raining for 24 hours. Okay, so your two tablespoons of milk. You're going to brush the scones with the milk. That's what gives them a slightly shiny coating. The last time I made these, it was a, we had much drier weather and our humidity normally is no more than like 30%. Lately, it's been 80 to 100%. First, because of fog and now because it's been raining nonstop. So, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be homemade, which is why it tastes better. So now we're going to put this in a 375 oven for 15 to 20 minutes. So put that in the oven, put the timer on for 15. Okay. And then we'll check it at 15 and see how it's doing. And then once they're all ready, we'll bring you back and show you the deliciousness. Thank you for coming back with us. Whoops. <laughs> Dahlia almost got beaned by the oven door. We now have our fully baked scones. And it actually did take the full 20 minutes. And I think because it's moisture, the air is moisture. And so that made the batter more moist. So... 20 minutes to 375. So, I'm come over here and then I'll show you what they all look like. Let me just close the oven. With dogs and small children, you've got to make sure you close drawers, etc. And I'm going to show you what one of these looks like. I will scoop it up. So basically, they're soft and flaky like a biscuit. You can see the steam rising off of it. Oh, and so good. spreading milk on it gives it the nice little sheen. 
and you don't want it to be much more than golden on the bottom. So that is how you make scones. And the original recipe came from a bag of sugar from Smart and Final, so always check the bags of flour and sugar that you buy. And with this, don't be afraid to experiment with ingredients. Once you try the core recipe, you can adjust it for your liking. So anyway, thanks again for joining us with Miss Cindy's Kitchen. And like and subscribe, and please give me your feedback. I love to hear from you. Ideas, tips, tricks, anything that you found that works best for you in the kitchen, or recipes you'd like to try, or like me to try, to demonstrate to everybody. So please give us your feedback and continue to watch us on Miss Cindy's Kitchen. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for watching Miss Cindy's Kitchen. To get more recipes like this one, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications when new videos are uploaded. Share it out to your friends, family, and neighbors, and leave us a comment to let us know how this recipe worked for you. And don't forget to hit that like button. Again, thank you for watching Miss Cindy's Kitchen.